Hello. So this week we are reading Candide by the French writer Voltaire. Voltaire, as you will discover when you read the introduction to his life story, was an enormously popular and influential writer in his time. He was also extremely controversial. He was uh, very skeptical of institutional power, of government, of the church. He was held up as a hero by revolutionaries in the French Revolution, and he even influenced some of the founding fathers in the United States. Um, so he was a very important literary figure. So <clears throat> what exactly did he write about? Well, in Candide, which is one of his most famous and well-loved um, stories, he is making a philosophical argument. And the philosophical argument that he is making is in response to a theory put forward by various philosophers and uh, most famously by the philosopher Leibniz that the world in which we find ourselves is the best of all possible worlds. What is, is best, right? So he takes this idea and he decides to poke fun at it. So the central character, Candide, uh, is raised by his mentor called Pangloss, who teaches him this philosophy, which in Pangloss it is said is a kind of uh, caricature or a stand-in for the real human being Leibniz. Pangloss, the philosopher, raises Candide to believe in this philosophy, that he is in the best of all possible worlds. Then Candide is thrown out of this idyllic uh, castle environment in which he is raised, and he goes out into the real world, and he just experiences uh, just tragedy after calamity after catastrophe, and it goes on and on and on and on to the point of absurdity. It's, it's kind of basically hilarious because it's just pushed to the most absolute extreme. And the people who he meets, it doesn't matter what background they come from, they all seem to be hypocrites, they all seem to be capable of lying in some way. Uh, there's a short, brief interlude in the middle where he visits a place called El Dorado, which is a kind of uh, new Eden or something, a kind of perfect place where he gets to stay for a while, but then he decides to leave. Um, he's constantly in pursuit of the woman that he loves, which is perhaps why he leaves this place, but perhaps there are other reasons for why he decides to leave El Dorado, and you can think about that as you're reading through this. Right at the very end of the story, it has a very kind of quiet ending where he has accepted or desires a simple life in which he can just tend his garden. So there's this image of the garden that, re that reappears again and again, this image of a kind of Eden from which he has been thrown and might be able to return. Uh, Voltaire is obviously uh, critical of... Um, mainstream contemporary religious beliefs of his time so he like some of the other uh, enlightenment figures he was not an atheist exactly he was more a kind of a theist so he held views that were not strictly christian but he did not dismiss the existence of god he had a kind of uh, a theistic view so that uh, god had created the world but was not constantly involved in the affairs of human beings and he believed this because he had witnessed so much um, misery and calamity in the world particularly he had seen um, the this this earthquake that had taken place in Lisbon which you will read about in the beginning of the introduction it had happened on November 1st in 1755 I mentioned that as well in the PowerPoint that I'm uploading as, as well as some other events that he had seen recently and he looks at this world and thought is it possible that this world is the best of all possible worlds is it a good world the best world and he puts forward this philosophical argument suggesting that no apparently it isn't the best of all possible worlds and he pushes that idea to its extreme comedically so he may hold philosophical views that are at odds with what many of us hold uh, but nevertheless, he presents some interesting ideas and he also provides a very highly entertaining tale. This story is 
uh, one of the wildest, craziest, most out there stories that you'll probably read. It's very condensed, just it's short chapters and something mad and crazy happens in each short chapter as it moves along. Um, I'd like you to pay attention to that, pay attention to the story, how he manages to move it forward at such a rapid pace while still developing his philosophical ideas. Why does he push it to such an extreme? Is it effective in what he's trying to achieve? Um, what is your philosophical take on what he offers? How would you respond, perhaps, to the philosophical position that he puts forward? What does he get right? What does he get wrong? Um, consider um, this idea of the garden, this perfect space, this Eden, and what he finds right at the end. Does that change the way that we read the rest of the story, the way that it ends? Does that perhaps suggest that Voltaire had a more complex view of how the world functioned and that there was a possibility of reclaiming some kind of Eden, that there was a way back to a more perfect world. Um, and again, bring your own thoughts to it, uh, bring your own outside uh, views and philosophical positions and any other thing, anything that you want to. I look forward to reading your responses and I hope you enjoy reading this wildly entertaining and crazy story.